something for you. Kobati. Where did baby Brenda go? While sitting round the campfire alongside the Harding River bed, where's my baby, baby Brenda, the sad and crying voice had said. She was an Injibandi from up near Robin Way, a young lass working on a station for board and meagre pay. Up rode a Yamaji stockman, a young great man was he. They lay down on the ground, in her eyes the stars he see. She bore a little Brenda girl when round about 13. They took her from the breast, and then Brenda she never seen. Cause the government bloke strode in and took a good long look around. This girl's going down to Perth. You're too young, is what I've found. A photo in the West Australian caught a Cottesloe family's eye. They gave her lots and lots of loving and fed her roast lamb and apple pie. They were told she'd been given up. No one would say, taken away. In those days it was the done thing, and it happened nearly every day. She was christened Lois Olney, and they gave her every chance. They drove her to singing lessons, and watched her start to dance. She sings just like a nightingale, even when she has the sads. If asked how on earth she does it, it's a gift from my mums and dads. Lois. These two are uh, really quick ones of John's, and his, one of his many passions is water. My water poems. H2O. Water, water are everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Australians have wasted it. It really should make us think about seeing a national shrink, or watch Aussies go down the drink. <laughs> Water, ra oh sorry, winter rain. Winter rain is here again. I hear it dripping on the pane. I really love to hear it rain. It helps the land to be sustained. Cockies need it for more grain. I see it going down the drain. Winter rain, gone again. I'm just going to introduce my brother, David, David Numbajara Stai. Hey. Thank you for, um, let me come here and um, say these words. <clears throat> W.A., her story. Way before the first explorers came, dark-skinned people roamed this land. They had simple way of living, to live with nature hand in hand. The Dutch felt the roaring forties roaring as they forced their ships on the coast. They saw black swans swimming in the river and left as they'd seen white ones the most. There was probably others before them across the oceans to our coast. Whichever lands they came from, they found Aboriginals friendly hosts. It was back in 1827. Captain James Sterling did arrive. He saw the fertile valley and the river. He thought a colony would survive. It was only two years later when he arrived here back here again to establish the Swan River Colony with pioneering women and men. If they had looked around, They'd have seen Aboriginals well fed. If they had listened to them, we'd have a reconciled state instead. They started clearing lots of country so sheep and cattle they could roam. They burnt and tilled and planted crops and built what they called home. The work was hard, slog and toil. The workers said, we'll go away. They packed their picks and shovels and travelled east for higher pay. So, we became a penal colony to help empty English jail the convicts built our city to satisfy British justice scales. It was way up in Halls Creek in 1886. First gold was found, and soon the golden of colony flourished in other ground. The goldfields needed water. See why O'Connor, he was the bloke. He planned a great long pipeline to give water to country folk. The state of Western Australia, it steadily grew and grew, with cattlemen like Jurek, McLeod and Coppin paying their due. For most of the 20th century, blood was spilt on foreign land. King's Park memorials are there, so the waste of war we all understand. From cultures all across the planet, new sand gripers did migrate. They sought a new and free life and found new friends to call met. There was Polly Farmer and Barry Cable, Shirley Strickland and all the rest. West Australians are great sports. 
were ever put to the sporting test. As we look forever forward, what does the future show? Let's nurture all this land so this great state can grow.